Hey guys, welcome to Sixes Overdrive. Today, I might be in over my head, but as always, if I get in too far, I'm going to correct it. But we're going to change out the stock 15 tooth sprocket to a 14, get a little more jam, get that front wheel up in the air. Um, and it's going to be Sixes Overdrive style, so I'll explain that again for you after the music. Okay guys, welcome back. Yeah, six is overdrive style. I told you I was gonna tell you how that works. Uh, basically, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an expert at anything. I usually don't have the right tools. So if that's you, this is a video for you. We're gonna make it as good as possible for you, whether or not anyway. So even an expert mechanic should be able to, uh, when I'm done this, it'll all be done right. So, uh, but I'm just forewarning you, if there's something wrong along the way, you're going to see what I did wrong. <laughs> and this one, quite frankly, is scaring me a little bit because it's an actual sprocket change. So uh, I'm going to see if I can do this. I have seen some tutorials, so we'll see how we do it. But I've never even done anything like uh, adjusted my chain tension before. That's how much of a noob I am when it comes to mechanics. So as always, let's get the stopwatch getting ready here. Okay, we've got a... Uh, first thing we're going to have to do is take this off. To do that, we're going to need a uh, uh, eight millimeter socket uh, for the back wheel to adjust the chain. After we're done, we're going to need a ten mil, and of course, we need a sprocket. Okay, now be very careful, guys. These sprockets, um, you have to watch what chain you have. So if you've bought your DR650 used and they've done like the 525 chain conversion or something. Um, you're going to have to uh, get a different sprocket. You have to be very careful when you order this, okay? If you got the standard chain that comes with the bike, then this is the one for you. I'm not even going to give you the model number because you want to check that out with your parts guy. So anyway, let's get the timer. Oh, also, you're going to want to set the bike up because the DR650 does not have a chain link in it. It's a continuous chain. But if you put it up on a stand... You shouldn't really do this. I don't recommend this. I had to get my wife out, and I'm scared about this. This isn't safe. It's just a five-gallon pail full of paint, and it lifts up all the wheels. That should give me the uh, the slack in the chain that I need to pull the sprocket off later. So here we go guys, we're starting by taking off this chain and sprocket uh, protector. I've heard a lot of motocross guys say that you just throw these things away. I don't recommend you do that. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because when you're riding on a motorbike, you're not always using motocross boots, right? And that being said, if you get your shoelace or something caught in here because your foot peg is right by this. Um, I would still keep part of the guard on like what I did. You know, maybe it's just me saying that what I do is right, but uh, I think that's the way to go on this thing. I, I would just have it so that you can clean it out a little bit. Here's that tricky little sucker I told you about that hides in behind there. You got to bend your socket a little bit to get it in there or go for a smaller socket <laughs> looks like I still need that Okay, there's one part of it done for you guys. That's all good to pull. put the bolts back in there. Now, these. Oh, looks like we need a 10 mil. Good thing I wrote that in at the start of the video, eh, guys? 
because I forgot to tell you about that when I was speaking about it, but that's why I've got this. Need a 10 mil. Oh, back wheel is. Oh, <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. Ooh. Okay. Man, I should have left this bike in gear, eh? This is a new technique. <laughs> you guys, the back wheel's spinning like crazy. So what I did was I put my uh, socket on the bolt and then spun the back wire tire. The first time I did it, I tried and the wheel just moved and I smacked my fingers on the uh, the some part of the engine. I don't know what it's called. Let's get these off. This is 10 mil for these things, guys. Now, just to warn you, from what I've read, um, you're going to have a little bit of trouble um, getting this to all line up properly after because the sprocket is smaller and you've got this retainer that I'm taking off right now. And uh, it does not... It does not fit. And there's also a seal in there that won't fit after that you're going to have to remove as well. So, uh, yeah. That's just some of the tips I've got. I should also have here, guys, and I don't have it with me, but I should have a screwdriver. Okay, now you see how I turned that? Did you see that? you got to turn it and then pull it out. Turn it and then... Now I can't do it. So you do it till the splines line up. And then you pull that off, okay? Let's put the bowls back in there. Um, the other thing too, for putting this all back together, guys, as you know, I probably won't put it back together for you. I might show you how to take apart the uh, rear wheel and do it. But um, yeah, we usually don't. Now does this just... Yeah, that just pops off. Look at that, guys. This is a seal that won't fit after. There it is. Let's put that over by the old one here. Now, supposedly, this just pops out like this. That's a brand new sprocket. I can keep anybody want to buy a brand new sprocket. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. Now this should have no problem going back on guys, according to plan, because it is smaller um, than the old one. So that should just go on there, right? Then what we're going to have to do is uh, we're going to have to grind this. And as stated earlier in uh, the first part of the video, we're going to have to get a grinder. I'm going to show you what you're going to do because we're going to have to make this flange smaller. So I'm going to reset the clock here a little bit. I'm going to go get an angle grinder and we're going to come back to do this, all right? Okay, guys, here's why we need the angle grinder and why we can't use this little seal here, all right? When you put the 14 tooth on, it's obviously smaller. And as you can see with my little camera here, there's no way to get that on. The chain hits it every time. Okay, so you take this off, take that, and we're going to have to grind an edge around this flange here with this in. Wish me luck, I own one of these but I don't know why, because I never use it. Better to get me a pair of gloves or something because this is getting hot. We're back. Here we go again. I, if you guys are laughing at me because I'm doing this all wrong, well, you have every right to because I'm a little bit of a schmuck when it comes to this stuff. That gets hot. Now, I got myself some Loctite while I was out since I was out before. So let's just cut the end off there. Remove the tip. It's 
so we can put these back on. So we're going to slide this spline. Here, let's take a look with the little GoPro here. Slide this spline. So these, see how they all line up there? And then you twist it. A little turn. Once you get it. just stays like that okay and we'll take these bolts we'll just a little dab will do this okay. uh, mechanic said by the way that that seal is probably just something to keep some rattling down or something in there but there is always a little bit of play because these bolts don't hold the sprocket in this plate is what's kind of holding it in there against the splines all right so now we have to learn how to do the rear wheel adjustment, all right? We're gonna turn off the cameras and reset them so we can do that. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna to try to loosen this off. I took it off the stand. All I had to do, actually, is pretty simple to use that paint pail, but the recommendation I had was make sure it's a full paint pail because it might just collapse under you. So I just leaned the bike back. I got on this side and I heaved it like that and uh, my wife pulled out the pail and then I just let it down on the kickstand. So here we go. Let's get this rear wheel off. Oh, guys, let me tell you, somebody really went overboard with a uh, air wrench at the PDI stage on this thing because this was tough to get off. I ended up getting on the other side of the bike, bracing myself down on the tank, but look at my hands. They're just shaking and red from trying to reef on that thing. That was brutal. Anyway, you'll get, you're going to run into problems like that, especially if you're like me and don't have a clue what you're doing. So it's still, it's still tight. Now, as far as I know, these things here are your adjustments. So uh, I think what we got to do is give that wheel a little pull back. Now, I'm just going to show you here, guys. There's little numbers on these things. See? So, what you want to do is you want to match them up both ways. Like right now, we're on a three. And once you get to the right tension on both wheels, you want to be exactly the same so the wheel runs true and then you can tighten the thing back up again. It's a real simple system for adjusting your rear wheel. On this side here, you got the same adjustment. See? Now, that's still pretty saggy, right? So we're gonna wanna tack that up a bit. I think that's pretty close. Maybe one tick here, man. Anyway, that's about two bumps past. Let's get to the other side. One, two. That should be it. And all I have to do is tighten her back up again. Should be nice. I'll take you around to the other side so we can finish this off. Anyway, I'm gonna do this stuff up later. You guys just found out that uh, any idiot can put a 14 tooth sprocket on their uh, DR650. That's not a bad thing. Uh, I can do it again, you can do it. So please remember to share, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Sixes Overdrive. Same bye-bye.